Joining us right now is Real Clear Politics National Political Reporter Caitlin Huey Burns. Caitlin, good to see you. Hi, good to see you. What are your expectations of Bloomberg getting into the race? Well, I think he's looking at uh, how Hillary Clinton performs in these early states. She's certainly vulnerable. The campaign is acting as if uh, this is going to be a very tough race for her. Um, and you saw those numbers in, in Iowa. I mean, Sanders is really um, competing against her pretty hard. And, and, and then Hillary Clinton over the weekend on the Sunday shows basically said, well, he said that he would only get in if I didn't get the nomination. Let me, let, let me just put that to rest right now. I'm getting the nomination. Yeah, confident she is. But he, he, in terms of you put Bloomberg up against a Democrat versus a conservative, he looks more like he, he's a liberal on guns, mm -hmm. gun rights. I mean, he's enemy of the national, uh, the NRA, on mm -hmm. immigration, on climate change, even on mm -hmm. uh, conservatives would have a real hard time with the whole nanny state issue of the banning, the the salt crackdown, the banning of the mm -hmm. large sodas that he tried to push through in New York City. Oh, sure, it's not like it would pull votes away from uh, Republicans uh, necessarily. Um, I do think, though, I mean, what a contrast between Sanders um, and uh, you know a billionaire so it's it's very interesting that way Caitlin tell me what you think from a practical perspective I've, I've read that around he, he has a short window to make the decision because I think by around March 10th mm -hmm. um, if he doesn't get on uh, if he doesn't declare before that it would be difficult as an independent to get on all 50 it states is. and then of course we all know that you need 270 electoral votes uh, in order to win so the popular vote and for him doesn't really matter Ed Rollins is on yesterday talking to Maria and, and he made the case mm -hmm. that he just doesn't see what states uh, he can bring in in terms of the Electoral College. Oh, Where are you on that? Sure. I think that's a huge, uh, he starts at a huge deficit if he is going to get in this. And then from an organizational perspective, I mean, he hasn't been running a campaign, right? It's not even that he has a campaign in waiting like a lot of these other campaigns have had before they hop into the race. So um, certainly he could fund himself, but um, in terms of, of turning out votes and also, um, you know, forming a, a campaign message, um, you know, Sanders certainly has a momentum and excitement behind his message. Um, I think that would be hard to compete with. What's your take on Hillary Clinton and this whole email uh, issue? I mean, now uh, I mentioned earlier that you know we're hearing that the State Department uh, is going to be, or the Defense, uh, the uh, Department of Justice is going to delay releasing emails until after some of the caucuses. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it doesn't look, uh, it, it looks very political at this point. Um, you know, it, she says that she's not asked about this on the campaign trail, and it's true. She's not asked by Democrats, really, at, at these kinds of campaign events. Uh, but Republicans are certainly making this a big issue, and it, it, it is important because at every turn, every time she tries to rebound from a tough news week, um, she's faced with, um, you know, something else about the email. But I thought email. it was very so telling over the on. weekend. Mm. I'm sorry to interrupt, but I yeah. thought it was very telling over the weekend that President President Obama in the Politico interview was very defensive of her and sort of tried to put some cold water on Bernie Sanders. So I don't know how all this plays in it. It's his Justice Department, but publicly he's being supportive of her. Well, it's interesting yeah, too to see right. how much um, Hillary Clinton has embraced the president, really trying to run um, on his legacy, which is actually a shift in this race. Remember when she started? She started as, I want to be my own campaign. I'm not the third term of my husband. I'm not the third term of this current president. And that has shifted as Bernie Sanders has, has proven to be a very fierce competitor. Yeah, well, the president's personal history is a little bit uh, rosier and glossier than her own husband. So, you know, <laughs> anything to anything to distance herself from the the Trump the Trump attacks, uh, which are legitimate on her on her husband's record. And she, effective. She, you want to talk uh, about a shapeshifter? I mean, man, she, she who's she going to saddle up to next? Maybe Mike Bloomberg, hmm. VP nominee. Yeah. Well, and you can already <laughs> see the Republican ads being cut, right? I mean, in the debate last week in the town hall, um, you know, this this real embrace of this current president. If his numbers are, you know, positive in November, that's great for her. If not, you know, that's going to be really tough and especially on foreign policy. Yeah, for sure. Caitlin, good stuff. Thanks so much. Thank you. Love your insights. We'll see you soon.